Hello, this is Norman, and in this video we're going to look at building a cluster with Windows Server 2012. And we're going to be building that cluster using VMware Workstation 11 and FreeNAS 9.3 for our shared storage. Okay, this will be a two-part video. In part one, we're going to look at configuring storage using FreeNAS 9.3. Uh, FreeNAS 9.3 gives you the ability to use those uh, SCSI 3 reservations which are necessary in a clustered environment. And in part two, we're going to be looking at actually uh, installing and configuring the clustering service in Windows Server 2012. So why don't we jump right in and start by configuring that NAS uh, for our shared storage. Here we are in, in our VMware environment and you can see we have three virtual machines. We have our the main controller which is handling our DNS. We also have CLUST1 and CLUST2. These will be the servers that will participate in the cluster. So all three machines are running Windows Server 2012 and the next thing that we want to do here is we want to go in and we want to create a virtual machine for our storage. So if we go to File, New Virtual Machine, the Virtual Machine Wizard opens up. We're going to select the Custom option select next as you can see workstation 11 next now we're going to use an ISO image for this installation so you can browse I have several images here we're going to use the latest FreeNAS-9.3 with FreeNAS 9.3 we have the ability to use those persistent reservations that are required uh, in a clustered environment with Windows 2012 so we have selected our ISO here and next and we can give the virtual machine a name. We'll just call ours FreeNAS. And we'll need a location to store the virtual machine. Now I've created a folder uh, on my hard drive, but it is recommended to install FreeNAS on a thumb drive. Uh, for our lab uh, purposes, I'm just going to put it on the hard drive. And select Next. And we'll take a very simple configuration here. Next, we'll give it a gig of RAM and next and we'll take our defaults we'll set it at NAT next we'll use a SCSI disk here create a new virtual disk and we're just going to make this 8 gigabyte and basically we're just taking our defaults and we'll put the disk in the same location as our virtual machine files I free NAS and save it and next customize hardware and you can see here one gig of memory one processor our CD points to our ISO image and we're not going to power on because we're going to add some more disks and we'll edit our virtual machine settings we're going to add some hard drives now this drive here would simulate a flash drive that you would use to install your free NAS but now we're going to create three more drives and these will be the drives that will be used to hold our storage so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a quorum drive and then we're going to create two storage drives so we'll select to add hard disk and the process will be pretty much the same for all three disks we'll just vary the size in the VMDK locations and names just some really basic stuff. We're going to make this 4 gigabyte and we'll call this one Quorum. And we'll browse to a location on the hard drive and we'll place that in a folder. So there's our 4 gig drive that we're going to be using for our quorum disk. Now we're going to add two storage disks sticking with the defaults in most instances. So SCSI, create new, and we're going to give these 50 gig each. And we'll name those so that we can differentiate. We'll call this one storage zero and we'll browse to a location on the hard drive we'll put this one in D in a folder called storage zero 
and finish and one more storage drive taking the defaults giving it 50 gig and we'll call this one storage one and we'll browse to a location on the hard drive for this one as well and now we have our four disks now remember our 8 gigabyte disk here this will simulate a flash drive uh, this is where we're going to install FreeNAS we have one disk of 4 gigabyte here this will be our quorum drive on the cluster and then we have two 50 gig disks and these will be our storage disks on the cluster so we are all configured here we have all of our hardware and the next thing we want to do is we want to start this uh, installation process for this virtual machine so we'll power on here and I'll just go to full screen and select to enter and this will begin the installation process our options are to install or upgrade to go to the shell reboot the system or to shut down the system so what we're going to do now is we're going to select install upgrade and OK. Now here you get the option of selecting which particular drive you want to install the free NAS on. We are going to take DA0 as this is simulating our flash drive. If you arrow down you can see the other disks that would be involved in this implementation. So we'll take our 8 gig simulated flash drive, hit the space bar to select it and then OK. The warning says here it will erase all partitions and data on DA0 and the note it says uh, flash media is preferred to installing on a hard drive. So enter again and give it a password. This is for the root account. And the installation will begin. FreeNAS has installed successfully and I will select enter and we will reboot the system. Now the installation has finished. Once it's done you'll get this shell screen here where you can do some additional configuration. But if you look down at the bottom of the screen here you'll see that you can also uh, go to an HTML page and do some configuration there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to modify the IP address uh, from the command line since I already have it listed in my DNS. So I'll select 1 and 1 again to select this particular NIC. Reset the network configuration, select No. Configure the interface for DHCP, no. Configure IPv4, yes. The interface name is EM0 and now I can put in the IP address that I have listed in DNS. It's 192.168.88.184 slash 24 and select enter. Do I want to do IPv6? No. And now that I've modified the address I can use my browser to finish configuring our storage. Alright, here I am on the domain controller. I want to access our FreeNAS installation and finish our configuration. So I'll open my browser and I'll type in the username and password. So I'm going to log in as root and the password that I configured when I installed it. And I'll remember that one and select to exit here. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to edit the domain here since I do have it listed in DNS as I said. So I'm going to call this freenas.test and select OK. And I'll select volumes 
and volume manager here we can create our volumes in order to make our storage available to the cluster we have two drives here and we have one drive here we can configure this here or we can do it manually so, so I'll do the first one manual and I'll type in the name quorum and I'll put in our drive and select to add the volume so here we have slash mount slash quorum and what we want to do here is we want to change the permissions so the owner is root the group is wheel we want to change it to windows permissions if we're in a windows environment which I am and I'll select to change then we'll go back to our volume manager and again we'll do it manually and we'll set up another volume we'll call this one storage zero and we'll select the disk and add the volume and on the left you see our, our new volume listed we're going to change the permissions set it to windows and change now we want one more volume in volume manager I'll do it manually storage one and we'll select our last disk and we'll set permissions here as well windows and change and here we have our three volumes now that we've created our volumes and set the permissions we want to go to services iSCSI and we're going to configure iSCSI so the first we want to do is we want to create a portal and we'll call it storage and we can accept the default IP address and port and we can go to initiators and add an initiator and we'll take the defaults here all initiators all networks this is just the lab select OK now we'll create our extents so we're going to add an extent and we'll give it a name quorum and we'll select file and we'll browse to mount quorum and we'll give it another name and we'll set the size here 1900 megabytes and OK now we'll add another extent we'll call this storage zero and set the extent type to file browse to our mount storage zero give it a name and the size we'll call we'll make these 46 gigabyte okay and the last extent will be storage one type is file browse to our mount point name it size this one at 46 big also and select OK so we have our extents now we need some targets so we're going to create some targets we're going to add a target target name will be quorum we could give it an alias if we desire so we'll set it to portal ID and initiator ID that we've created and OK we'll add another target storage zero
and our portal and initiator IDs and our last target will be storage one and done now we need to associate the targets with the extents to do that you go to associated targets we'll just use auto for the LAN IDs we'll select quorum for the target and quorum for the extent and we'll just do that for our other two disks as well storage zero and storage zero and storage one and storage one So we have our target global configuration, we have our portal, we have our initiator, under authorized access we, we can leave that as it is, under targets we have our three targets, our three extents, and our three associations with the LUN ID set to auto. Now we go back to services, control services, and we need to turn on the iSCSI service. And we could also turn on SSH while we're at it. This way if the web interface becomes unavailable, we can always SSH in and do whatever configuration we needed to do there. And we'll configure root login uh, with the password. So part one is complete. Configuring storage with free NAS. 